hey guys welcome to another video how are you guys doing if you're new hey don't forget to smash that subscribe button and if you're a returning subscriber mwah. thank you so much for coming back i really really appreciate it so in today's video i'm going to be talking about the books that i read in may honestly guys may was a very very good reading month i think i always say that but yeah i read 10 books these six were from my physical tbr and then i read four on my kindle i think i'm doing really good because my main aim is to read more books more physical books than ebooks because i have a lot of physical tbr to exist anyway um i'm going to be telling you guys about uh, i'm going to be telling you guys my thoughts about all these books but before i get into that i'm going to show you the ones that i was not able to get to uh, the god of good looks say you swear seven husbands of evelyn hugo i already started it this june so so i'll tell you guys about it in june first book i read is happily never after by lynn painter this book was actually really really fun it's about sophie and max sophie was getting married but she could not break off the marriage because it would lead to so many so many consequences her family will suffer for it and stuff like that so she got someone which is max to object so they are wedding objectors <laughs> So Max came to our wedding and he objected and that way she was able to escape getting married to a man. So something happened where she now decided to join Max and then both of them started objecting weddings for other couples that want to get out of their wedding but can't do it themselves. And more like they call themselves like their heroes and I understand because sometimes it might be difficult to be able to like to just say no it's difficult but when someone else does it for you it's yeah. You understand i really enjoyed the story it was so fun in the beginning the only thing i didn't really like was the fact that sophie kept on denying the feelings that she had for max and max was actually scared to push out to the world another thing i didn't like is i felt like they had not moved on totally from their exes like they had not healed fully there was a part in the book where it showed us they had already moved on but it didn't feel like it but anyway i shall love the way everything played out in the end i gave it a 3.5 stars it was a very very fun read i think you should read it the next book i read is scarred oh my god you guys this book they say it's a light dark romance but this book is really dark in my own opinion so tristan wants to take over the throne from his brother michael and then the name of the girl is i think sarah yes sarah i still remember yay amazing <laughs> There are also is coming for revenge. Tristan is not supposed to even be caught in any form of closeness with Sarah because she's betrothed. Oh, betrothed. Oh my god, what's the word? She's gonna be the future queen. But she has her own aging agenda. So I really, really enjoyed this book. I like the fact that it's different from Hooked. In Hooked, the the girl was basically useless. Sorry she she was not doing anything she was not intense like this but here sarah was very very strong she can fight and she's smart and she knows how to put on this facial mask so she can trick people they cannot read her emotions on her face and i really like that oh my god there were so many beautiful quotes in this i just felt like michael was very very stupid because how would your brother you know that you've been acting this way to your brother and then the next thing you are trusting him blindly and you expect anyway anyway oh oh, oh guys there was one crazy part tristan burned down the castle for sarah <laughs> like and then he said he would do it again if there's ever a chance he's gonna do it again like oh my god oh my god oh my god i love how tristan was with simon oh with the people generally i gave this a four stars the next book i read can, can you see i have almost cleaned off the the name of the author and the name of this so this is the invisible life of adela rue guys this book is chunky and i ate up every single word okay i'm not going to lie i actually used the audiobook alongside i was you know reading and listening at the same time and i felt like that made it much more beautiful because this book is written beautifully like lyrically like rhythm like it, oh my god it, it was uh, i'm in love with the writing and then the story is about adi adi has lived for 300 years and she made a deal with the wrong god 
basically. Because she's trying to run away from some things. And then the God actually twisted everything for her and answered her wish, answered her prayer, but twisted it in a way. So along the line, she cannot create anything. If she if she walks, her full step gets erased. So basically, anyone who knows her forgets her almost immediately. So that's how it was happening for years. So we get to go along with her each life that she had lived like every every place she has been to everything she had done how she gets her heart broken so many times you know when you meet somebody today and then you meet the person tomorrow again the person's asking who are you hi like that was your first time but to you it's not your first time to to her it was not her first time after 300 years she met a particular guy that she's in love with but some things happened there was a twist there and yeah guys honestly but let me just say i feel like my favorite character is luke i don't know every time i hear him say my adeline there's the way the the audiobook uh re uh person was pronouncing it like she knows how to pronounce the french so perfectly like everything was just so oh beautiful my adeline i, I, I keep i was like oh i just like that my feelings oh yeah Oh my god, it was so good. I really, really liked it. I gave it a five stars. Five stars, guys. Five freaking stars. I cried at the end. And then, the funniest thing is, I cried at the end. But I got to the last page, and then I was like, huh? <laughs> because what happened there was so shocking. My friend said it was boring to her, because she kept repeating some years. But I didn't feel bored, because I felt like it's, it's expected. You live for 300 years, so of course... And then another thing is it kept jumping from past to present to past to present to another past to present. But I was not really confused. I just took note of the years because the years were written on each chapter. Okay, so the next book I read is My Kind of Trouble by L.A. Schwartz. It's an ARC uh, I received from NetGalley. This book is going to be published October 8, 2024 so yeah um this book is about preston and harmony harmony is a con artist so she came to this small town because she wanted to do something so she met preston and preston is a librarian he's autistic also so he, he doesn't really understand some signals he's just a cool guy basically he's a cool guy i really really enjoyed reading this book it was fun although it was written in third person pov which i'm quite slow with but if i listen i'm faster because i feel like someone is reading the story to me but this one because i was reading i was very very slow so it goes through how she starts to fall in love with preston and then she doesn't want to perform the con anymore which is actually understandable and predictable of course my favorite thing is the way preston takes care of his sister oh my god his sister is also autistic and oh preston was autistic and dyslexic dyslexic oh jesus you guys know what i'm trying to say yeah so she is like a sunshiny and she's a plus size character i really like that about her yeah things just went like that like that like that i don't know what like that like that like that means but i hope you understand i also love the queer representation in this book because preston was advocating for more queer books to be available in the library the book is actually really good. I just felt like it was dragged in the middle. And also, I wish there was more conversation between Harmony and Preston alone because their banter was so sweet. It was just like enlightening and refreshing and funny. I gave it a 3.5 stars. The next book I read was Barbarian's Mate on my Kindle. This is, I think, the sixth or the seventh book in the Ice Planet Barbarian series. And this particular book was about Rosie and Aiden. If you read the previous book, they already told us that Rosie was the last person to be paired up or to have resonance with any of the male. And it was because she has uh, something in her. So somehow, somehow, the thing that was in her got removed and then she now had resonance with Aiden. So Aiden is a grumpy man because they just call him a man grumpy alien because he has been through so many things what he has been through made him that cold and that grumpy but rosie doesn't know what happened she just felt like oh he hates me and this and then so they are enemies apparently so we start to see how okay she discovers that she likes him but i feel like rosie honestly wouldn't have liked him if 
the resonance hadn't made her like because the resonance is like something that would make you like the person even though you don't naturally like the person because it, the resonance will make you get attracted to the person that's how i see the resonance as so i felt like rosie was not going to like him without the resonance i don't know but then again that's how the book that's how the book was written so <laughs> the journey the whole selfishness that rosie, rosie was being selfish at one point and aiden was being like he was trying his best he didn't even know that he was coming off as that to her anyway i gave it a four stars there was more adventure in this one the next book i read is before your memory fades i body read this with my friend kenny this is the third book in the series there are four books the fourth one just came out it still follows the same path there's a particular chair in a particular restaurant and if you sit on that chair you travel back in time so most people that come to visit that restaurant to travel back in time or travel to the future they always have something that they are trying to correct that happened wrong or they are trying to change but then again there are some rules that must be followed i really enjoyed the story but then again i felt like i was bored in some places i felt like i was much more interested in the people that work in the cafe than the people that were even traveling back in time and the story is supposed to be about those traveling back in time and also the story felt repetitive in that most of them the reasons for going back is similar just maybe the name of the person and oh another thing is um there's a new restaurant so there are like two branches of this restaurant now so which was actually confusing i was confused and caught off guard and the last story was actually unexpected for me and that was why i gave it a 3.5 stars i feel like it's a cozy read but if you don't mind the old repetition and the overwhelming amount of names that are just being dropped i think you would enjoy this the next book i read is as good as dead by Oli jackson i'm so excited because this is the last book in a series and i'm proud of myself i finished a series you know finally finished the series so i body read this with my friend Oluato Sin. although the funniest thing is she has not finished reading it she's in a book slump and i told her to try to use the audiobook but she's refusing to use the audiobook alongside i use the audiobook alongside uh the one i, I found an audiobook on youtube the guy was sounding like a computer but i still got through it anyway anyway uh, this was actually really really intense also but i have to say that the peep in this book is different from the peep in the book one and the book two and in killjoy very different because here peep is going through trauma and she started getting into drugs and it was different for me because yes i understand that she was traumatized from what happened in the last book but then again that's not the peep i'm, I'm used to and the fact that her mother was being nonchalant sorry i was trying to have what kind of accent but people started noticing some things somebody is trying to kill her but her mother is like no 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 my dear it's something else i'm like no you, this girl solved murder cases and she's telling you that something is wrong and you're like nothing is wrong no I, I wouldn't do that to my child anyway here we get to see who the killer is quickly i even predicted who the killer was going to be and it turned out to be that way halfway through the book now the remaining half of the book was peep trying to cover up something and then trying her best to not be implica implica implicated implicated in this thing and dragging her friends to do it with her and then at the end of everything being scared that it's busted i'm like you can't go through all this stress and then be scared at the end and almost give up at the end like like she's so smart in the whole thing yeah 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 i really really enjoyed that but then again i was also really really tired and stressed i just wanted to get to the end because it was getting too long it was getting elongated and the story just kind of deviated in my own opinion but anyway i still enjoyed it i gave it a four stars i think this series is a very good series for you to read honestly you would not regret it the next book i read is funny story by emily henry this is a new book a new release and i'm excited because i'm trying to up on the trend although i'm still left behind I, I, there's so many books i've not read but that's by the way so this talks about daphne and miles so daphne was about to get married to peter petra is peter's best friend and Pe Pe petra is miles girlfriend so peter said he's no longer in love with 
Daphne, so that is in love with his best friend. So he broke up with her just like a few months to their wedding. And so the two of them moved together. He sent Daphne out of the house. So Daphne had to go and stay with Miles because uh, Miles is Petra's ex now. So the two of them are now living together in the same house. So, But the book was not action filled or anything. It, all through the book, we're just seeing them trying to move on, but going backwards. And then Peter and Petra were moving on. <laughs> that one alone self was a little bit weird. But then again, I really loved the friendship that they had, Miles and Daphne. And the kind of personality Miles it, ooh, personality Miles has. Because he's very friendly and sweet with every single person. He cares about people. And then Daphne, oh, she's a very honest soul. She doesn't like to lie. Like, she's a very plain person. And I really like that personality, too. At the end of everything, I really loved the way the story actually wrapped up. It was really nice. But then again, I felt like the middle was just dragging on after a while. But then again, I still enjoyed the story. So I gave it a four stars. The next book I read is this memoir, Crying in H. Mark by Ma michelle zona i didn't know who michelle zona was before picking up this book but when i started reading it i had to go browse to see her picture and also saw some things about her like she's a musician in this book we see how our culture plays a huge role in our relationship with our mother because she's half korean half american and then the mention of korean foods oh my god in this book and i'm like i was just tapping a lot of places because i want to taste this food whenever i have the chance to go to korea one day so yeah it, when i started reading it i, I it, it felt like a hug I don't know how to explain that feeling, but it just felt like a warm, soft hug. But then again, I realized I was spending a lot of time, so I decided to continue with the audio, and I was reading alongside. I think, I, I forgot the term they use for that, but I always do that. I don't just listen to audios alone. I listen and read along, because that way I feel like I am more invested in the story, and I really, really enjoyed it, but it was not as sad as I thought it was going to be. A lot of people say it's very sad, you're going to cry. I did not cry, but it was very sad also. I gave it a four stars. I feel kind of weird rating someone's life story, you know? Boy. Yeah. Yeah. Then the last book I read, oh my god, Mechanics of Yenagua by Michael Afenfia. This guy, <laughs> I said this guy, <laughs> this book talks about these people in Nigeria. I've forgotten the particular place. Ah, I don't know how to explain how chaotic and dramatic this book is. So his name is Ebinimi and <laughs> he's a mechanic but it's by choice he really wanted to be a mechanic so he also has his bsc but he just chose to be a mechanic and then you get to see how so many stupid choices he made affected his life and put him in so many katakata <laughs> and then so many <laughs> things were just happening and it was so dramatic i was just laughing and yeah it's honestly this book is a book that you just read to make you happy to while away the time it's fast paced also because you are invested in the story i really really enjoyed it i gave it a 4.5 stars it was supposed to be a five star but i didn't give it a five star because of the way it, the book ended honestly i felt like there would have been a better way for it to end but that still didn't take away from the joy I'm just, I don't just, I just don't give books 4.75 to 0.25. If not, I'll have given it maybe a 4.9 or a 4.75 or something. But honestly, I really, really enjoyed this. It's a book that I want to keep forever because if I, if I need something to just relax and just to laugh, I will just, you know, pick it up and read. So that's it, guys. Tell me which ones you, you read and in your ratings and tell me your favorite book so that I'll add it to my TBR, you know, along the line. I, I'm so grateful. Thank you so much for watching. Please do not forget to hit that subscribe button also. And Jesus. <laughs> Wait, I need to move my microphone closer. Okay, yes. So, oh, I didn't mean to move so close like this. What the heck? Jesus. What was the next book I read? Um, I feel like if I don't talk about it now, my head is going to be more molded up, you know? I have to check the title of the next book I read because I've forgotten. She's a she's an act. She's like, I don't talk to her.